Hello, it's good to be back with you for um, prayer time today on Wednesday. Um, thank you for the time off last week. I hope everybody had a nice Christmas and New Year's holiday and um, people were able to rest and get to see family and friends and all of those good things. Um, so I do want to share with you a word of scripture today. We will be celebrating um, at Baptism of the Lord Sunday this Sunday. And um, we will be baptizing some little boys um, in the awakening service. So that'll be fun and have new members joining. So it'll be a wonderful day. So I wanted to share with you um, the Old Testament lesson um, from Isaiah for this Sunday um, for baptism of the Lord. It's Isaiah 43 verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overcome, overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give, my, I give people in return for you, nations, in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you up. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, for, for whom I formed and made. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. And we say, thanks be to God. This is one of, um, one of my favorite passages in Isaiah um, because it's familiar. It's a familiar text for me. And it's also um, one to return to um, time and again. Um, it's a, a very helpful passage um, for me because it, it is comforting to remember um, that the God who created us, who formed us, and also reminders of um, do not fear that we have been redeemed. We have been called by name and we are God's. And um, just that little piece of that verse <laughs> is so comforting and so helpful um, to remember and to be anchored and to, um, to be centered in. Um, especially, you know, when we're passing through the waters, when we're going through <laughs> um, deep waters, um, when we're going through the fire, when we feel all of these overwhelming emotions and we feel real fear um, and we feel frustration <laughs> and anxiety and, um, and feel like we're being overcome by the darkness, um, it's important to remember that God is with us and that God calls us not to fear and that God knows us by name and we have been redeemed um, and we continue to be redeemed. Um, and so this Sunday, when we think about the baptism of the Lord Sunday, we, we remember Jesus's baptism um, by, by John in the River Jordan. And it also invites um, opportunity for us to remember our own baptisms. Um, some of us may not be baptized, and maybe that's an, offer to, uh, um, an offering, I guess, for an invitation if you are considering baptism. Um, but then also uh, a time for us to remember that we are baptized. Some of us may not remember our baptism in our own memory, um, but yet um, others of us, like myself, I remember my baptism. I was baptized as a young child. So when we think about these things, it's important to remember the promises that are made by God in our baptism, the promises that we as a community of faith make to one another to comfort and to hold and to teach and to raise up in the faith, um, and the commitments that we make as individuals, as parents, as grandparents, um, as those br bringing people to baptism, um, the affirmations of our faith, and all of those things are very important. Um, to help us orient and to help us um, engage God and to remember um, who God is, um, especially in these moments where you feel overwhelmed. 
and possibly even persecuted. Um, so that's the word for the day. I would like to share some updates to the prayer concerns. We've been um, praying for people for a while and others. There are new concerns to be raised and to add to our prayer time. Um, we continue to pray for Kathy McNeil, who has continued her chemo and is having her physical therapy. Um, we had a wonderful Advent and Christmas season with her um, at the helm, at the, at the organ. And um, so we're grateful for her ability to have the strength to do that for us and with us on Sunday mornings um, and a few, a few things on Sunday evenings or Christmas Eve. But we continue to pray for her. We also pray for Willie Hubbard. Um, his cancer numbers remain good, so we're grateful for that. But we continue to pray for Betty Lou, who is at, ho at home with hospice care. There are several other members to be mentioned who are with hospice care right now. Catherine Hyatt is at home. June Edwards is at home. Um, Catherine Young is at Arrowhead Cove, which is where she resides um, there. We also pray for um, many others who are receiving cancer treatments. Um, we pray for Brenda Griswold, for Nancy Ray, Anne Dismuke, Robert Clauser, Andrew, Stephen, Hunter, Mary Arbaugh, Arturo Suarez, Irene Noland, Scott, Mike, Rose Dennehy, Colton Jenkins, and Barbara Malden's sister. We also lift up prayers um, for Susan Purvis, who continues to recover, for Lloyd Lilly, who has dementia and is at home, for Elise McSwain's sister, Carol, and her decline in health, for Sheila Fowler, for Heather, who is Diane Haynes' daughter, for Wani Hardin at Givens Healthcare, for Sandy Forrest, who is Judy and Charles Matlack's daughter, who has pancreatic cancer and is receiving treatments for that. We pray for Corinne Faircloth's friends. Um, her friend Joe G is having surgery on Sunday, I mean, I'm sorry, on January the 25th to replace a bone in his leg. And their friend Alan, is, his tumor is shrinking, so we're grateful for that. We also pray for Donna Wilkins um, and their son, Ross, at Autumn Care. We continue to pray for Pat Thompson as she improves at home after her hip replacement surgery, the second one. Um, we pray for prayers for the pain there and that the therapy continues to help her improve. I heard from Gail Robertson. Um, she asked for prayers for their friend, um, Jeff, and their family who lost his brother, Freddie, to COVID complications. We've been praying for Freddie. Um, he, has, he had COVID and he passed away. So we pray for um, their family at this, this very difficult loss. We also pray for her sister, Donna, who, is, who has breast cancer and is having surgery this week. We continue to pray for Penny Poor, um, their son, Blake, who has autism and IDD. We pray for David Glosson. Um, he had scans this week to find out what's going on with his in internally, and um, a lot of things are happening there, and a lot of pain and discomfort. And so we pray pray for answers for him and for comfort um, with whatever the, the diagnosis those answers have provided. We pray also for um, Rebecca and Butch Beaver. Um, this is Christy Blackburn's mom, um, Michael and Christy Blackburn. Um, her mother, Rebecca, and her stepfather, Butch. Um, Butch has been very sick since before Christmas and has been hospitalized and um, is in ICU still. has been there for a while. Um, so we pray for them as he recovers. He seems to be stable. We hope that he continues to recover steadily. So prayers for them. Dorothy Wilson asked for prayers for their daughter Landry, who is having wisdom teeth surgery this week. Hope that all went well and um, that she's recovering well at home from that. We also pray for um, Adriane. She asked for prayers for her family who lives in Bolivia. Um, her grandmother, her aunt, her cousins, and her sister all have COVID, um, and her sister is really not doing well. So we're praying for Adriane's whole family in Bolivia. 
We had a couple of deaths affect our congregation since we've been together last. Um, Jack King died. And so we pray for Isla at this loss. Um, and the funeral will be this Saturday in our sanctuary, um, January the 8th at 2 o'clock. Um, so we hope that you'll be able to come and um, spend time with Isla and remember him and, and worship our God together. We also received word over the um, over our time since we've been together that Peggy Evans' father passed away. His name was John Eubanks, so we pray for her and um, for her sisters, Sue and Angie. Those are all the requests that have been mentioned to me to share aloud with you. Um, so anytime you have concerns that you'd like to share or would like for me to pray over, I'd be happy to do that for you. And um, we will meet again next week for our Wednesday prayer time. So let us pray. God, we are grateful for scripture and the words today that are comforting and that are familiar. We give you thanks for reminders um, of our baptisms of the importance and the significance of the sacrament. We give thanks for the holy waters that cleanse us and redeem us and continue to redeem us over and over again. For salvation is a process, not a one-time event. It's something that we work out over our lives. We receive the grace, though, and we're grateful for it. As we consider Jesus' baptism, we um, give thanks for John and the baptism that was there, and for the, the way to show us the way of faith is to step into the waters and to receive your grace, seek forgiveness from our sins, um, and move forward as faithful followers, as new creations for you. And so, God, we ask that we would remember those moments, consider the depths of our, of our baptisms, and we might share those stories with one another. And if we're unsure about our baptism, we would seek out friendships and, and others who might help us um, work through that and think about and consider what baptism might mean for us. God, we, we thank, we're thankful for the reminders of faith that no matter what we're going through, the difficult trials and the difficult times and the anxiety and the frustration and the anger and um, the concern for the ones we love, that you are a God who walks through reminder that we will never be completely overwhelmed by those floodwaters or by that fire because you are God who intercedes and provides us with your strength and your hope. So God, we pray your blessings upon all of those we've mentioned today, for those who struggle daily, for those who are waiting for results from tests, and it seems like that wait is so excruciating, for those who are enduring surgeries or recovering from them, and for the many others who have COVID or have, um, or who are relatives who are very sick, or for those who are um, inconvenienced by COVID because they have a diagnosis and aren't able to see their friends or go to school or see their families. And all of that anxiety and frustration that comes with the continuing pandemic. We lift all of these things up to you, O oh God, because you are a God who hears and a God who listens and a God who saves. And we are grateful for that today. So let us pray as the Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thanks for joining me for prayer time. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care. God bless.